highlight of college so far has been seeing how much my capacity is stretched. Like I know I came to college with this much to offer, but God has managed to use me this much and I don't know what happened in the gap, but God was in there and it's just blown me away. this morning about a subject that I feel God placed on my heart over the last few days as I got ready to lean into the word with you this week and I think probably next week as well that we may linger here a little longer. And I want to speak on the realm this morning of where God has taken me about our house and, and spoken to me individually as well. I want to speak about the realm of promotion. Promotion. It's a word that often is not used when it comes to the church. It's used maybe in your work role at work or in your business or you would use it more in a secular idea or concept. But do you know promotion is a God idea? Do you know that God wants to promote you and promote I and promote his people? Because when good people, the Bible says in Proverbs, when good people are promoted, all goes well in the city. That when good people with pure hearts and pure motives are promoted, then things begin to prosper in the way that God intended them. And I believe for us as a church, and therefore for any in this house and attached to this house, because it's not for one, it's for all, that we're into a season with God where he is looking to promote us. And I don't want us to mishandle a promotion that is heaven sent. I don't want us to miss out on the promotion that God is extending towards us because we don't even recognize that it is for us or something that we're supposed to respond to. It's not just the graduation of students this weekend, but I believe the message that God wants to speak is about a graduation spiritually of all of us to a new level. And I actually believe if you get your head around this, there will not be just 22 students that sign up for second year, but by the end of today, there'll be more like 32 students that decide that they're staying because you're gonna realize you have a part to play. God's not messing with you. It's not optional. Actually, for you, it's essential because there's a promotion that God wants you part of of, that God is saying, do you not recognize the moment that is before you? I have, over the last couple of months personally, received several invitations that have freaked me out. I'm just being honest. In fact, I'm embarrassed to tell you that I had one invitation that came a few months ago and it came to my office and and it so confused me and it seemed so out there that I said to Shirley, they've clearly got the wrong person and I actually put the invitation in the bin. Only to a month later, be at dinner with a politician in our country who said, I was very disappointed that you did not come to that event in London. It was only 22 people that were allowed to attend. And I'd worked really hard because I knew you should be on the guest list. It's with the top million billionaires in this nation that were gathering. And I think you should be in the room with people that have the power to help further the vision of what God has given you. And I bowed my head in shame and I said, I am so sorry. I actually put it in the bin. I didn't think it was for me. And in that moment, I felt God say, that is the problem. That when I try to promote good people, our small mindedness begins to shrink the almighty God to something that we feel comfortable with. The almighty God that has his hand on his people in his church that has no problem putting you in a room with people way more powerful, way more influential because just like David, he sees what's in you and he says, I trust you in this setting, you're gonna be fine. But our response oftentimes retards what God wants to do in the nation because we can't get out of our small minded thinking or we can't get out of what our parents said about us or our friends said about us or the history history of where we live or our own internal insecurity robs God of having this promotional opportunity through your life and mine. I received one yesterday in the post to my home and I came in this morning and said, is this a joke? Invited to go to Alexander McQueen's whatever who he is, he's a designer, right? 
I don't know, Shirley's looking at me, she understands these things. Some exhibition and some private showing of this exhibition and some soiree in London. And, and I almost put it in the bin. I'm not going to go, I can't go, but I almost put it in the bin. But I thought, no, I'm going to frame it and put it on my desk to remind me of my, of my, of my wrong way of thinking my wrong way of thinking about what God is trying to do. And I'm not saying that because it's an invitation that just came to my house. I'm saying it because God has used those scenarios this week in my life to help me understand what he wants to say to you in your life this moment, which is God wants to promote us, but our response will determine whether we step into the promotion or not. God wants to extend an invitation to our house, an invitation to our lives, all of our lives, that we would step into another level, another realm of responsibility, another realm of authority, another realm of influence. God wants to promote us, as it were, to the next level of the ladder of influence for the kingdom of God, not so that we look great, but so we can take the name of our great God into areas where his name is not being spoken and speak his word and speak his wisdom into situations where it is void of his wisdom. And God is looking for those that when the invitation arrives, we will respond accordingly. Thing is, when invitations arrive to things that you feel a little uncomfortable about, all the stupid stuff starts to go through your brain. Like, what am I gonna wear? I can't go to something where I don't even know if that's a designer or not. I mean, what would you, what do you wear to these things? I don't think ripped jeans would be appropriate. I don't think I have anything in my closet that would be appropriate for the kind of invitation. I mean, what do you say? What do you say when you stood with an ambassador? Do you bow? Do you curtsy? What do you do? When I went down to Downing Street for the first time to meet our prime minister, you should have seen the shopping trips I went on before I went to Downing Street. Is this appropriate? I'm doing selfies in the dressing room are these trousers too loud is this skirt too short are these heels too high what do you wear because you get all caught up in stuff that does not matter and our mind goes that well I can't go because you know I'm gonna feel out of place I can't go because you know I, I'm less than you know I can't go because they have money and I don't you know I can't go because I don't have the right attire and we and we excuse ourselves and the enemy does a great job of giving us all the reasons why we don't qualify to be useful in the hands of God why we don't qualify to step into this next season and next level that God has but promotion is God's idea in fact the dictionary Dictionary definition of promotion shocked me this week because actually promotion in several de definitions in the dictionary says promotion is the increase of the territory of rule that you have and God's all about increasing the rule in this land of his kingdom and taking new territory it says that promotion is about you stepping into a new rank of authority and God's all about his church stepping into a new rank of authority so if you're saying well promotion sounds like patting yourself on the back promotion sounds like something secular in a spiritual environment no the godly interpretation of what it means to be promoted is that it's all about taking more ground and it's all about taking more rank to further God's cause. It actually says in Job 36 verse seven in the message that God's eyes are on the righteous and he wants to honor them lavishly and promote them endlessly. It's not just one promotion God wants to give his people. He wants to promote us and elevate us and lift us up so when the world are looking for wisdom and when the world are looking for a place where they feel safe and when the world are looking for answers, they don't have to look far because they see the lighthouse, which is the church of God on the hill that's shining out saying, you can come here. And so I want us to not be fooled like I have been in my own personal life to be blinded to what I feel I am not. And so therefore I'm saying no when God is saying, I sent the invite, I sent the call. I created the environment in Bradford. I created an environment for my church to shine. I created a time in history for my church to take new ground. I created a time and a space that was fraught with battle. And yes, there was difficulty. And yes, you had to get out your sword and you had to take down some giants. But all that was so that I could promote the church into a place of influence, into a place of stature, into a place of stepping up and doing something at a whole nother level. You know, when I was worshiping, I had a picture in my mind of Steve, my husband, the other day when the Sainsbury's home delivery shopping came to our house. 
and the delivery of the internet shop that we'd ordered came to the house and I was upstairs in the kitchen and Steve was at the door with the delivery man and of course he was having a full-blown conversation because nobody comes to our door without a full-blown conversation. If it was me, I'd be like, see ya, thanks. But Steve's like, come on in, have a coffee. And after they've had this long chat, this guy is at the door and says to Steve, here's your list and here's your substitutions. And Steve said, substitutions? And he said, yeah, we've just made a decision to send you something else because we didn't have that item in stock. And normally I don't even read the substitutions. I just accept that they sent me a substitution. But Steve was like, I didn't order those kind of baked beans. That is a lesser quality of bean. I didn't order that particular that particular cereal, in fact, we don't even like that cereal, so I'm sorry, but I don't want to accept your substitution. I'm gonna hold out for what it is that I actually want in my home. And I felt in the worship, some of you are accepting all the time the substitution the enemy's sending you. You just can't hold out long enough. You just can't stay planted long enough. You just can't be in the place of patience long enough. So you'll accept the substitution of the lesser ministry, the substitution of the lesser relationship, the substitution of the lesser opportunity because frustration is beginning to guide your decisions. And some of you this morning need to understand, no, hold on. Do not accept the substitution, but go after the thing that God wants to use you in a promotion for. Don't live the less than life anymore. Say, you know what? I know it's going to cost me to say this. I know I'm going to have an awkward conversation with the delivery man on my door who's trying to hand me something off so he can go about his business. But I know that God is calling me into promotion. And no other person might not stand with me, but I know that I know I have to change my mindset. I have to change my confession so I can step in to my destiny. God wants you and I to be promoted. He wants his house to be promoted. Jesus brought a great promotional opportunity to the town of Nazareth. It was his hometown people. This was the place where he grew up. He knew everybody in the neighborhood. He knew where everybody hung out. He knew who the corner shop owner was. He knew where the family were that had the naughty dogs. He knew where the family were that had the children that were less than angels. He knew where people were on that neighborhood. He knew where everybody was. Jesus in this town, in Nazareth, he could make a home visit at a whole nother level. Because when he came to your home, he would know everything because he grew up around here. These were people that were his friends. These were people that babysat him. These were people that he wanted to bless. These were people who'd been good to him as a boy. So now Jesus, with the anointing of God all over him, wants to go home. He wants to bring promotion to Nazareth. He wants to bring promotion to his town. He's like, you know what, I'm gonna drop by my house, I'm gonna drop by my neighborhood, because I want the people that I grew up with to know, hey, you've got a part of this too. Hey, you're part of me, you're you're part of my upbringing. You know what, I wanna bless you with the gift that God has graced on my life. And so he drops by his hometown. It's like an invitation shows up to Nazareth, an invitation to own this moment, that Jesus, the Messiah, is someone that you all know. He hung around on the streets where you all hung around, and so he shows up with nothing but blessing in his heart. He shows up with nothing with promotion on his mind. He shows up to make a difference. But the response was less than. The response of that town took an opportunity and turned it into a lost moment that's recorded for us throughout history. That Nazareth, that could have had so many things go on, I mean, imagine for a moment that Jesus was born in Bradford. I mean, imagine if you were smart in here. The marketing opportunity alone This is where Jesus hung out. You could have like a photographic booth by the place where he hung out. Tim Nelson would have a business off the back of it. He'd be making money. He'd have a photo booth set up. He'd have it registered. He'd have it protected. He'd have the domain name. Jesus was here. He'd have it all going on. Why? Because Jesus could have brought promotion to that town. That town could have been the place where he always stopped by. 
He could have said, you know what? Don't think about stopping by in some far off place where people don't know you. We know your favorite food, Jesus. Hey, hey, you know our boys, Jesus. You can come by any time. We're gonna make this town your hometown. We're gonna put it on the map. You would think that Nazareth would have the mindset to see the promotion that was in this moment. But there were two responses from the same mouths. Not two responses from two different groups, two responses from the same people. It says in Matthew 13, verse 53, after Jesus has done all this incredible teaching, after he's walked around doing ministry, after he's done many miracles, it says Jesus finished the parables and he moved on from there and then coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom? And these miraculous powers, wow. And then they said this, out of the same mouth. Yeah, but isn't this the carpenter's son? Yeah, isn't this just mother, his mother's name Mary and, and his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and, and all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things and from that moment on they took offense at him? And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own town and in his own home. And he did not do any miracles there because of their lack of faith. Here's an amazing moment in history where this promotion is extended to the people of Nazareth. He went there to bless them, to elevate them, to lift them up as a town, to to actually help them as people, to do miracles there. And in one breath, they're like, wow, we recognize the gift on you, Jesus. We recognize the wisdom on you, wow. And in the second breath, they're like, but wait a minute, who do you think you are? I know your mother, I know your sisters, I know when you were a brat, I know where you grew up, I know your mistakes. And in the same mouth, the one mouth that was in wow in the next moment is criticizing. And Jesus says, because of your response, not because of my heart, not because I don't want to, not because I'm not fully able to, but because of your response, I have to put my hands in my pockets and go and take my miracles elsewhere. And here's what sobers me, church. Because of our response, this city will either see miracles, signs, and wonders on a regular basis, or God will have to say, because of your familiarity, because of your attitude, because of the way you stepped up or did not step up, I could not do there what I wanted to do. It's not on God's end, it's actually on our end. It's actually on our end. And that does one of two things to me. It freaks me out. It sobers me. It makes me think about where I'm messing about when I should be stepping up. It makes me think about where my attitude is slowing down what God wants to do. And I think that we need a Holy Ghost awareness, a fear of God awareness. You know, when I say fear of God, some of you are like, what's that? I mean, honestly, like you're not frightened of him, but I mean a holy reverent, oh my gosh. God, we are handling your people. We are building your house. We are called as your children. And then you think about all the stuff you're messing around with in your own life that is making no difference to anybody. Then you think of all the things you're saying that are taking down what God is trying to build up. Then you think about your attitude and where it measures up with the promotion that God has for his people. And everything about your life all of a sudden becomes magnified in the most uncomfortable way. See, promotion is exposing. Promotion is stepping into a bigger level, a bigger realm with the big boys. It's exposing all at the same time as it's honoring and all at the same time as it's exciting, it's actually exposing. Because if you don't have your act together before you become boss, you're in trouble when you're boss. If you don't have your act together before you step into that role, when you're in that role, everyone's gonna tell you how you don't have your act together. And that's why oftentimes we would rather be a big fish in a small pond than be a small fish in a big pond. 
We'd rather stay with people where at least I'm, I'm comfortable, at least I look good, at least, you know, this is my area of where I can actually swim well here, at least, at least I don't feel exposed here, but when God begins to promote, every ugly is exposed. Every short falling is exposed, but that's what the grace of God is for. God goes, I knew that when I had promoted you. I knew there was a problem in your marriage. I knew there was an issue in that area and the way you speak. I knew there was a struggle in you and your attitude, but you know what? This next level can be your greatest level because as I promote you, my grace is on you. My face is towards you. My favor will be extended to you and you don't have to be perfect in order to qualify for promotion. You just have to remember that God is a perfect God. And I don't want God to look at Bradford, to look at Warsaw, to look at Northern Ireland, to look at any project we're doing and see behind the project people that have their arms folded spiritually and say, I just don't want to do the work. I'm just not sure I want to get that involved. I'm just not sure that I see what you see. Ah, you know what? It's just church. You know what? It's just a Sunday service. And you know what, I've got headaches, I'm just gonna sleep in bed. You know what, it doesn't matter if I'm not there. You know what, it's just, it's just a graduation. No big deal, I'm not graduating. You know, why should I be bothered? You know what, it's just an offering. It's like the bucket pass by, it's a little moment of embarrassment, but it's soon gone, nobody saw that in You know what, and we forget, no, 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 no. Our showing up, our amen. Our attitude, our giving, our, 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 our part of it is our response to God's extension to us. And what we do in those moments tells God where we're at in the season that we find ourselves as a church. And I, for one, when God extends a promotion, do not want to be in bed with the duvet over my head because all I can think about is moi and my feelings. I want to say, God, I'm so sorry that you extended to us a great opportunity and yet we couldn't get past ourselves in order to take what you're giving us. I want us not to be like Nazareth. I want us to be desperate for, for God. I want us to be hungry to do what God, I want us to have such a thirst for what God is doing that it changes the way we speak and it changes the way we act. I have nine minutes left and I knew I wouldn't get this far this morning and so we've got next week as well to look at this but I wanna just maybe start by talking for a few moments in the next few sessions we have, this one and next week. I wanna talk about the things that protect promotion and things that poison promotion. Because I think we should know. I think we need to study the word and I think we need to know whether we're adding poison or whether we're adding protection to the things that God are doing. Whether we're letting bitterness, whether we're letting things destroy what God wants to do. And if we are, we can fix that. We have time to fix that. We have time to sort it out. There's a grace in God, if we can recognize it, that we can all be in on this that God wants to do in and through us. You know, there's a scene in Alice in a Wonderland, the film, where she has two bottles. I don't know if you've ever watched Alice, anyone with kids or now grandkids, you've probably watched it many times. It's actually one of my favorite films. And there's a scene in Alice where there's two bottles and they say, drink me. And you know, one of them, when she drinks it, it shrinks her down to this tiny person. And then another one, when she drinks it, she gets so big that her head sticks out the roof of the building that she was in, that she fit adequately in before. And I think that's the season we're in. You pick which bottle you drink from. You drink one that will shrink everything God wants to do down to your level of comfort. You shrink it down to your level of faith. You shrink it down to your confession. You shrink it down to your background or your mistakes. Or, or you can shrink it down, you can drink that bottle or you can drink the bottle that's gonna make it so that your head sticks through the roof and everybody realizes, okay, we need to build a bigger building. We need to expand our vision. We have grown out of the four walls of the containment that the enemy tried to tell us was all we were good for. You know what, I see in my spirit thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people coming into the house of God. But I tell you, for it to happen, we've got to drink the bottle. 
that expands our heart, expands our vision, expands our prayer, expands our hunger. We've got to be down here. We've got to be on these seats. We've got to be leaning in. We've got to be amening. We've got to be worshiping. We've got to be praying. Because I tell you, when you're hungry, God keeps feeding. But when you're casual, God's like, you know what? Like in Nazareth, I'll do miracles somewhere else. I don't want God to take my miracle to somebody else's life. I don't want someone else to be managing a move of God that came through our town, but we didn't even see it, we didn't recognize it because we're so busy looking for our own opportunity. Promotional protector, I wanna just maybe spend my five minutes on this one, and Sam can come up so that you have hope that I'm gonna finish. Um, Because it's been a while since I preached, so I get carried away. Promotional protector. One of the first things I think we've got to keep our eye and our mind on is our devotion. Our devotion level as a church is crucial. You know, I've been looking at where God has done a move of God in churches around the world. I was thinking about Hillsong this week. They're about to have Hillsong Conference in Sydney, Australia, and you know, just was at Colour in South Africa a little while ago. But looking at that whole thing play out, you know, they've never ever le- left or lost their passion for worship. And I think it's a key to why God keeps promoting them. Because when what you worship becomes you, or your gift, or your talent, you shrink, you drink the bottle that shrinks what God wants to do. But when a church is a worshiping house, when a church has people down the front, giving it all, singing love let loose in Milan, they don't care what anybody thinks, when a church has their arms extended to heaven and their mouth full of praise, when a church is a worshiping house, when a church realizes we are on holy ground, when a church will drop on its knees and say, God, this is for you, when a church has songs that are being penned that glorify who God is. That's why I don't think it's a coincidence that our house is a house known for worship. I think God is saying to all of you, worship team, lift your level. The promotion is key to your devotion. There are songs you must write in this season that will help us as a church lift our whole level. There are things that we will do in worship that will lift us and it'll be like almost we didn't even see it happening, but God scooped us all up into a different dimension. You know, there are dimensions in worship where when you get there, you hear things and you see things, and you see angels, and you hear voices that are not earthly. You know that there's a realm that God will take us to that is is open to us, but it's our response that will determine whether we go in there or not. God opens the gates and says, come in. You know, worship is not a filler before the word. That's why I don't understand when people roll in two songs in. I'm like, do you not understand this isn't about whether you like the song or not. This is about a church that's like, I am here to worship. I am a worshiper. I'm here to bring my voice to say to God, thank you. I'm here to say, God, I don't understand my world right now, but you know what, you are God. You know what, I'm in awe of you, Jesus. That we open our mouth with a song that says who he is, not what we're not. That worship is pivotal and central, that when God is wanting to promote us, our devotion must go deeper. Our worship must go to another level. Our praise must be from a different place. We can't afford for our worship to be a reflection of our feelings. Well, the sun's shining, so we're happy clappy this morning. Well, you know what, I've had a good week, so I'm gonna lift my mouth in worship this morning. We can't say things like, well, I don't like that kind of worship. You know, people leave church over the style of worship. And I think, wow, really? The church is all about you? I I didn't know that we we were choosing songs to please you. I thought we were singing songs to lift up who God is. I thought we were worshiping who He is. And I'm just letting you know, church, If we want to take the promotion God's extending to us, we're gonna have to deepen our devotion. So here's what that looks like. When was the last time you opened your Bible? (laughs) I can't, 
I can't be devoted for you. When was the last time you read your own Bible? Not because someone gave you a scripture in church or because somebody said you should or you were embarrassed or you guilted yourself into it. I mean, where is your devotion personally? Because it's all of our devotion that will mean that we handle our promotion well. It's all of our prayer life that will affect the promotion God gives our house. It's all of our seeking of His face that will affect what we see. It's all of our spiritual hunger that will determine what God is able to give us. It's our desperation for who He is that will override who we are. It's our devotion to the Scripture, our devotion to His Word, our devotion to His presence, our devotion to being at His feet. It's that devotion in your Monday through to your Sunday that will mean that we either handle this promotion well or God goes, you just don't seem to want it. It's kind of like, you gotta start, start that hunger in you again. You know, some of you in here, you used to teach Bible study. Now, because no one's asking you to teach, you don't even bother getting into the Word. As if the audience was the thing that justified your teaching. No, you gotta get in the Word, whether you have an audience of one or an audience of a thousand, because you're devoted to the Word of God. Because God's always speaking and God's always leading and God's always guiding. And we've got to be a house of devotion. We've got to write songs of devotion. We've got to live a life of devotion. I tell you, when you live in that place of devotion, the things become clear that we're confused. When you have an awe of who God is, you realize actually what you're not in a good way. And you realize, actually, God, I'm not, you know, when you don't have a place in your life where you have that sense of the awe of God, you begin to start to think it's all about you. And I don't have time to go on to this, maybe next week, but you know, the opposite of this, the opposite of a church that's devoted, the opposite of protecting the promotion is the poison called pride. We'll look at it next week. But if we get proud, if we think somehow this is because we're so great, if we think it's because we're so gifted, if we think it's because Jock's such a great songwriter or Matt's just got his, you know, great songwriting, if we think it's about that, we miss the point. No, God gives gifts to His people so that He can be elevated. He gives gifts to His servants so that He can be glorified. And if you're not careful, that's why corporate worship is so important. Corporate coming together is so important because if you're not careful, you become a self-promoter. Marketing your own gift, marketing your own talent, marketing your own skill set, and you become a self-promoter because you've forgotten. It's not actually about you. <laughs> it's actually about living a life that's devoted and letting God do His part while we respond in heart. And I'm just challenging us. We need to be a house of prayer right now. We need all to be praying. To be praying when you drive your car, praying when you're putting your kids to bed, praying as you're doing the grocery shopping, praying as you're in your office, praying as you're picking up the phone. God, help me, speak to me, guide me. God needs to be invited into that part of your world. We need to be a house of worship. What's on your stereo, what's in your home, we need to be a house that speaks His words of love and life, our devotion will protect us in this season of promotion. Let's just all stand to our feet. Time's gone and there's much more to say, but we don't need to say it this morning. We've got time. And I want to say to you students tonight, don't just think you're getting a certificate. Don't just think, phew, I did it. Just walk across the stage and shake a hand and think, you know, I'm done with my year. No, God wants to promote you. God wants to use you a part of the promotion in what He's doing on the earth. God wants to use you. Don't lose your sense of devotion. Don't lose your sense of prayer. Don't lose your sense of leaning in. Don't, don't take a substitute. I say to some of you in here, do not settle for a substitute. Don't take it, even though it's been pushed across the table to you and it looks convenient and it seems right. Don't take a substitute. God has something else for you, but you have to say no. Close your eyes all across the room. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace. 
We thank you for your incredible presence. And God, we pray this morning we would not be like the people of Nazareth, that we know you and we know of you, and we read your word and we hear you, but out of the same mouth we criticize or we familiarize or we remove the power of the promotion that you have for your house. Oh God, let us not have a Bradford mindset about a kingdom calling. Let us not have a poverty heart about an eternal promised life. Let us not have a it will do attitude about something that is eternal and heaven breathed. Lord, I pray we will be saturated today in our homes and in our conversations that the times we are living in are rare, they are precious. The times we are living in are powerful and poignant. That the invitation we're being sent does not belong in the bin. It belongs in our hearts and in our lives. And I pray today we'd stop worrying that we don't have the right clothes or the right background or the right experience. And we'd realize, God, if you are extending the invite, then you see in us what maybe we don't see in ourselves. And I pray we would refuse the substitution and we'd step up and say yes to the promotion. For God, it's not about us. It's about your kingdom. It's about your church. And it's about the thousands upon thousands yet to find you. God, sober us today. Grace us with your presence all through this day. Let today not just be a graduation of 70, but let it be a graduation of thousands in our thinking, in our confession, in our believing. Pray for anyone that is fearful of being exposed in this season. Let your grace be their portion. Let them trust you, God and be covered by your love today. Let them understand that you are more for them than they'll ever be for themselves. When good people are promoted, great things happen. Pray that you would see a house of good people so that your great name can become famous in this city and beyond. you know about LEAD, our Leadership One Day coming up on the 20th of September. Shaw and I are so passionate about building the local church and helping leaders at any level. So we want to invite you to come. I'm John Siebling, lead pastor of the Life Church in Memphis, Tennessee in the United States. I can't wait to be at LEAD, Leadership One Day, hosted by my great friend Stephen Charlotte Gamble. Looking forward to meeting leaders from all across the UK talking about all things leadership. Man, if there's a time we need leadership in this world, it is right now. The day is free, so let's spread the word and we'll see you there.